Fall is the time to harvest sweet potatoes, and there's some signs to look for, but not all signs happen in all zones. I'll show you how to tell when it's time to harvest your sweet potatoes, how to harvest your sweet potatoes, and how to cure them for long-term storage. In some areas, especially cooler regions, the sweet potato vines will start to yellow and they'll begin to wither once they're starting to reach the maturity. And this is one really good indicator, at least for some zones. But as you can see here, my sweet potato vines are really nice and green still, and they've been in the ground for 100 days. And sweet potatoes take between 90 and 110 days to reach full maturity, depending on the variety that you have. But even if I leave my sweet potatoes in the ground for another two weeks, they're still gonna stay really nice and green. So you can see that's not really the best indicator for when your sweet potatoes are ready. Our nights are still in the mid 50s and they won't start to yellow and wither until we start to dip down into the 40s. One thing about sweet potatoes is you don't have to be super precise on the day that you harvest them. So if you don't remember the day that you planted them, or you don't know what variety you planted, or maybe how many days to maturity, you don't have to worry about it because there's other indicators that we can look for. In September, I'll start to check my sweet potatoes to see if they're starting to size up. And so I'll just move the vines away and look to see if I can see any sweet potato, the roots starting to emerge up out of that soil because a lot of times they'll just heave up out of that soil. Or you might even see some soil starting to mound. And if it is, then I just brush some of the dirt away. And if they look like they're sized up enough, I might remove one or two or dig one up to see if they're to the size that I like. And if not, then I'll just leave them a couple more weeks as long as we're not having a frost coming up anytime soon. A lot of root crops get sweeter after a frost, but we don't want our sweet potatoes to be hit by a frost because this can damage them. If it was just a light frost and it hit you by surprise, then get out there and harvest them immediately. But if it was a deep freeze, more than likely it'll ruin your entire crop. It's actually better to harvest your sweet potatoes early rather than late. If your sweet potato roots are left in the ground, then they'll continue to grow at least until they freeze. And bigger isn't necessarily better. We've had some reach 12 and a half pounds. And while they were really impressive, it really wasn't necessary because we really like a smaller potato because they're just more manageable for us. Did you know that sweet potatoes aren't tubers like potatoes? They're just an enlarged lateral root. Once our sweet potato roots are to the size that we like and it's time to harvest, we wanna cut back all of this greenery so that we can see what we're doing. So we'll just cut all of this off to about a couple of inches above the ground. Now what I like to do with this is I'll give some of this to the goats and all of this green, nice nitrogen is great to be adding into the compost pile. The bunny also gets a few bites too. Big farm production will come in and just actually mow all of their vines down to make it easier for their harvest. But we're just small, so we're just gonna cut these guys out. Here's a little tidbit. If you've ever harvested your sweet potatoes and they taste kind of stringy, it's more than likely from over fertilization. So when I plant my sweet potatoes, I add plenty of compost and use a well-balanced all-purpose fertilizer, and that's all I do. They don't need any food beyond that. One of the best tools to harvest your sweet potatoes is just a garden spade. When I used to use a digging fork and I would lift that soil up, I'd always get a root stuck in between those tines. So a spade just works really great. If you've got a small area, then maybe just a hand trowel will work well. Or if you have really good loose soil, you might even be able just to reach in there and pull those sweet potatoes out. What you wanna do is look for those fingers sticking up, the sweet potatoes kind of heaved up out of that soil, and take your spade and move it about a foot away from that to lift your soil and work your way in. And a lot of times underneath that main crop, you'll find some other smaller potatoes that are some real jewels underneath. A lot of times you can just reach into the soil where you have a cluster of sweet potatoes that are still attached to the vine and kind of slowly shake those up right out of that soil and that's a really easy way to harvest it. But if they're kind of tight and they're not coming up really easy, then you better get your spade because you might end up breaking those sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes have thin skin until they've been cured. So when you harvest them, you wanna be careful not to bruise them or cut into that skin. Now that skin will thicken once they've been cured. In 
order to keep our sweet potatoes, we need to cure them. And we need to cure them for about a week to 10 days. And the best temperatures to do this are between 80 and 85 degrees. Our fall temperatures stay around that during the daytime. Our nighttime temperatures dip into the 50s and that's okay because they store just fine. The biggest thing is, is we don't want them to freeze and we don't want them to get too hot either. Keep it around 80 to 85 degrees. We cure ours on our covered back porch in a flat, one single layer. You don't want to stack your sweet potatoes. And then we put a blanket over them. That just helps keep that humidity up, which they like, and keeps the temperatures more consistent. During the sweet potato curing process, you want to just go ahead and leave that dirt on there. You definitely don't want to be spraying it off. And once they've cured, then you can just brush it off if you want. The curing process allows for any cuts and bruises that may have happened when you were digging them up to heal over. Plus, the skin thickens. But I still use any of these damaged sweet potatoes first before I use the good ones. When storing sweet potatoes, they shrink as the starches start to turn into sugars. By curing them properly, this stops that excessive shrinkage so that they store longer. So you can see why it's so important to cure your sweet potatoes properly. Sweet potatoes will store for several months if they're stored properly. They really like temperatures between 50 and 60 degrees. If you have less than an ideal place, maybe just a cool basement, garage, or even a pantry will work fine. We've had sweet potatoes last clean into March, but most of the times we eat them before that time. Don't forget to keep an eye on your sweet potatoes through the winter months to make sure that you don't have any spoilage. And if you do, make sure that you move them right away. Sweet potatoes have some great health benefits. They've been used for anemia, diabetes, high blood pressure, and even bug bites. Orange flesh varieties are full of beta carotene. Sounds like we better grow and eat more sweet potatoes. For next year's crop, we wanna make sure that we don't plant sweet potatoes in the same place. We wanna wait for at least three years before we plant sweet potatoes in that same space. This is good crop rotation. As you can see, harvesting sweet potatoes in nice loose soil is a lot easier. But don't get too anxious next year to plant your sweet potatoes. They don't like cold and they certainly won't tolerate a frost. I plant my sweet potatoes two weeks after our last expected frost in the springtime. Now that all those sweet potatoes are up and harvested and that soil is really nice and loose, this will be the perfect place to plant garlic. All I need to do is add some compost, some nitrogen fertilizer, and I'm all set. I never like to leave a space bare. Happy harvesting!